Hello students, welcome back to another episode of Principles of Micro. Today we are in Chapter 8, looking at business costs and production. So we know a really big part of this class is supply and demand. We know a demand side comes from consumers and their preferences. We developed that back in Chapter 16. Now I've got to look more at the supply side in the next couple of chapters. So I'll talk about the cost that firms face, and then we'll see how that affects the market, depending upon how competitive the market is. So on one end you have perfect competition. That's something we talked about a little bit earlier. That's where a lot of small firms and each firm is too small to have any impact on price. On the other end, you have a monopoly where it's just one single dominant firm. And you also have intermediate cases, which we will talk about as well. So this is starting a section. There'll be a series on the supply side. So look at profit, and then we'll look at the production function. The production function tells you what the firm can produce given its inputs. So it has this many workers and this many machines. How much stuff can the firm make? That's what the production function is telling you. We'll look at the firm's costs in both the long run and the short run, and we'll see the difference between those two time frames. We'll also see something that's very, very important. That is diminishing marginal returns. We learned about diminishing marginal utility back in chapter 16. Something analogous is true for firms, and this will be a hugely important topic. You'll hear about that probably in every econ cl class you take from now on. Just one of those foundational ideas. All right, with that intro out of the way, let's talk about profit. So in general, profit is just total revenue minus total costs. So how much money the firm takes in minus how much it pays out. Now, we can rewrite total revenue as price times quantity. So recall our notation from chapter three. We use P for price and Q for quantity. Why that formula works? Well, price is the amount of money you get per unit. You then multiply it by number of units to figure out how much money you've gotten in total. So if you sell five widgets for $10 each, how much money have you made? Five times 10, that's $50. Now, costs can come in one of two forms. There are explicit costs and there are opportunity costs. As for terminology, your book refers to them as explicit costs and implicit costs. However, that term is more, um, that term is rather idiosyncratic. Most books will not say implicit costs. Most books will say opportunity costs. We learned about opportunity costs way back in chapter one. It was one of our five foundations of economics. So we defined opportunity costs to be the value of your next best alternative. We had several examples, one of which was if you go to college. So if you weren't going to college, what would, be, what would you be doing with yourself instead? You'd be working. And if you work, you're going to be earning a wage from doing that. So if you're going to college, you face the explicit costs of your tuition, your fees, and your textbooks and all that. But the biggest cost of going to college is actually not those explicit costs. The biggest cost is the opportunity cost, the money you could be earning from a full-time job. I mentioned back in chapter one that perhaps some of you guys are working part-time. However, even then, you still face an opportunity cost. If it weren't for all your classes, you could be working more hours than you are now. So if you're working while going to school, you still face an opportunity cost. So 
So accounting profit is total revenue minus all the explicit costs. There are many examples out there of what explicit costs might be. You have to pay your workers. If you rent your storefront, you got to pay rent to the landlord. Your factory probably requires some equipment to make stuff, so that equipment is also going to cost money. It also takes energy to keep the lights on and keep the machines running, so your energy bill is also an explicit cost, and there are countless others. Now, let's be an econ class. We care not so much about accounting profit, but rather about what we call economic profit. So economic profit, you have your total revenue minus your explicit costs, but you also subtract off the opportunity costs. Though economic profit is the more relevant variable, the difficulty you face in real life is that it can be hard to measure these opportunity costs. So we saw the foundations of this idea set way back in chapter one. I remind you of a couple of examples that we had from there. We had Robert who wanted to start a business. He figured they needed $10,000 to get his business off the ground. Robert's a pretty good saver, so he's got $10,000 in the bank already. He could just take the money out of his savings account and not get a loan. Alternatively, he could keep the money in the bank and just borrow instead. We said his savings were getting 5% interest per year. If he got a loan, the interest rate would be 2% annually. So back in our example in chapter one, Robert thought he would be better to take the money out of his savings account because he did not want to go into any debt. However, we found out that this was overlooking an opportunity cost. If you take the money out of your savings account, you are giving up the 5% interest you could be getting. So his next best alternative would be keep the money in the savings account and keep earning interest. So he says that 5% opportunity cost. It turned out in our example that the 5% opportunity cost was bigger than the interest rate on his loan. So he's better off taking out the loan and leaving his money in the bank. Now, what this means for accounting and economic profit, if you're just looking at accounting profit, you would fall for the same trap that Robert did. You would think that it's better to take the money out of your savings account because accounting profit back over here does not account for that opportunity cost. So you make the wrong decision if you focused on accounting profit. If you looked at your economic profit though, you'd realize that you have this 5% opportunity cost and that would lead you to the correct decision that's better to take out a loan. So economic profit is what you really want to care about. So here's another example we will revisit from chapter one. So Robert and his assistant Joseph conducted business for a year together and now they're looking back and talking about how things went. So Robert's pretty happy that he got a $30,000 accounting profit from his first year in business. By the way, a lot of new businesses fail, so if he got a profit in year one, probably a good sign. Now Joseph asked a question about, that was trying to elicit Robert's opportunity cost. Joseph asked, how much are you earning from your old job? In order to start his new business, Robert had to quit his previous job. Turns out Robert was earning 70,000 per year. Joseph then realized that's your opportunity cost of 70,000. He subtracted off that opportunity cost from the accounting profit. And that's how Joseph got 
the economic profit. It's showing that Robert's business, where he earns 30000 is $40,000 worse than his old job, where he got 70000 per year. Now, of course, it's possible that Robert's business will really grow and thrive and eventually way out earn his, own, his old job. However, on the basis of the first year alone, you can't assume that. So, just look at the economic profit, which is the variable you want to care about. So that's our section on profit. In our next episode, we'll talk about the production function.